Hello, my name is Brian Leonard, and um, how many of you here do not know Solaris yet? Good. That's, that's, this is the getting started with Solaris. So if you're a Solaris expert, uh, you're going to be pretty bored over the next hour. This is the basics. Uh, one of the neat things about Oracle acquiring Sun is, um, I, as Bill just talked about, you're going to see sort of a resurgence of Solaris. It is, it is the key operating system going forward for Oracle. The things that we're going to be able to do uh, for our applications running on top of the operating system, on top of the Sun hardware, is going to be astounding. And uh, it's that stack that, if you were just in the previous presentation, uh, uh, that we're going to be able to optimize and really take advantage of. So uh, what I'm going to show you today is exactly, you know, how do I get started with Solaris? And I'm making the point, this talk is not about open Solaris. It's about Solaris. It's, that's truly our enterprise operating system. Open Solaris, which is something we've, if you were here last year, we, you know, we were talking about, and it's a real, I'm running it on my laptop, it's very cool, but from a working in the enterprise, what you really want to know where you're going to make money as a developer or an administrator is knowing Solaris. And so right off the bat, this is highly demo driven. What I thought I would do is actually take a version of Solaris 10 and get it up and running on my laptop. And so I'm going to start with a demo because the first step takes a couple of minutes. And so how many of you here already know what VirtualBox is? So not too many of you. All right, well, that's fine. I have a talk actually tomorrow in track two that's all about VirtualBox. I'm not going to go in too much depth right now, except basically it's a software tool. It's open source. It allows you to run other operating systems on top of whatever your host operating system is. So whether you're running Windows, Linux, Solaris, Mac even, uh, you install VirtualBox and then so you can see in my copy of VirtualBox I have several copies of Open Solaris, Solaris 10, Ubuntu. If I scroll down here you'll see I have some copies of Windows running. So it really allows me to test all these different operating systems. So when you go to get Solaris 10 there's three ways you can get it. One of the ways is a virtual appliance that's VirtualBox ready. It's about two gigabits. I've already downloaded it. And what I'm going to do now is import that into VirtualBox. So I select Import Appliance. So here I see I have the Solaris 10 virtual image. And then there, there's a small five kilobit file. That's just the definition file for VirtualBox. And so now it sort of brings up a, uh, here's basically the contents of that five gigabit file. And so it wants to know, what do you want to call this virtual machine? I'll stick with the default. I will tell it, however, that the, the guest OS type is, I do know, it is Solaris. And VirtualBox will even let me run 64-bit. If you have a, a, a chipset that supports 64-bit, VirtualBox will pass that through so I can run 64-bit. How much RAM do I want to give this virtual machine? I'm going to bump this up a little bit. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to select import. And it's going to come up and it's going to say something ridiculous like 33 minutes remaining. And now I don't have, I only have 46 minutes to talk to you. So fortunately that's incorrect. It's actually going to finish in a couple of minutes. But while it's figuring out how long it's going to take, I'll actually start my presentation. And so what I thought I'd go through for the next 50 minutes, just a handful of things to sort of get you introduced to Solaris. If you, I think about Sun Microsystems, I think about Sun hardware or Spark hardware, the Spark chip and the Solaris operating system. That's what the company was founded on, based on the Sun workstation. And so we've had a whole bunch of versions of Solaris, but the one that's prominent in the market right now is Solaris 10. And it's actually very mature. It was released five years ago in January of 2005. Since that time, or once we have a release of Solaris, we release updates to Solaris. And so we've had eight of them so far. Uh, they, they occur roughly every six to eight months. The updates include support for new hardware, like as new chips come out on the market, both from us and from Intel and AMD. And they also support new features. So it's not just bug fixes. The updates to Solaris bring in 
very significant new features to the release. Okay, and as Bill talked about, OpenSolaris.org is where you can sort of go and check out what the next version of Solaris is going to look like. But again, that's not what I'm talking about today. All right, let's see how our import's coming along. All right, still 36 minutes. That's all right. We'll, we'll come back to it. So let's talk about installation now. As I said, there's basically if you go to Google and you just type get Solaris 10 or get Solaris, it'll bring you to our primary page where you'll see three options. One, you can download the DVD. It's about three gigabits. And then you could burn that to a physical DVD and install it or in, or, or in your data center or your, wherever you want to install it. The option I'm using is the second one there is the virtual appliance. That's what I downloaded. And now that's being imported into VirtualBox. And that should finish relatively soon. And if you have $30 and you physically like having uh, the, the materials in your hands, we will ship you uh, what we call the media kit. And it's a nice little DVD case that includes four DVDs, uh, Solaris for Spark and x86, as well as a CD with developer tools and another CD with additional companion software. That's a bunch of open source software that runs on Solaris. Look at that, 11 seconds remaining. Isn't that amazing? It's time to go to lunch. OK, so Solaris 10 has popped into my VirtualBox. Notice it's powered off. And so I'm going to go ahead and start this up. And again, so this is, you know, all I've, all I've pre-done is downloaded it. So this is everything you would do to, to check out Solaris 10. You get a little grub menu. And this is going to start, this is going to boot. And again, I'm going I'm to kind of let that do its thing for a bit and come back to that. So just a little bit more on VirtualBox. Bill talked about this a bit. Again, I have a talk on this. There's a nice graphic that sort of explains how it works pretty well. Um, if you run any, you know, you recognize all these logos. If any one of these is your host operating system, then you can install VirtualBox onto that operating system. Uh, and then from a guest, there's even a whole bunch of additional choices that you can choose from, like, you know, OS2. If you're, you're probably not running it as your host operating system anymore, but if there's some reason you needed to test something with OS2, uh, VirtualBox supports that as a guest. Okay. All right, good. Done. So once Solaris 10 boots up, we're going to be brought into what we call the Java desktop system. Now, this, this, this desktop, it's GNOME-based. If you're a Linux person, you know what GNOME is for sure. Um, if you're a Windows person, uh, it was actually designed uh, with you in mind. And so if you look at the desktop at first glance, if, if you're a Linux user, it doesn't look like traditional GNOME. GNOME. It's been redesigned to look sort of like Windows. So we just changed some things. So instead of a start menu, we have a launch menu. Instead of the my computer, it's this computer. Instead of my documents, it's documents. So the, the whole intent is, though, and so you, as a new user to the desktop, you look at it and you go, oh, yeah, I kind of get this. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. All right, so what we're going to do now is go through a one-time system configuration step. It's going to ask me a couple of questions like my keyboard layout. Now it's going to configure my network. That takes a couple seconds as well, so I'll come back to that. 